All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome. This is Ritvan Idemir or the Apostate Prophet. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I am here finally with someone that I have been talking, that I've been wanting to talk to for uh, quite a long time. In fact, we had a, uh, a conversation before that uh, didn't go very well because uh, there were so many technical issues on my side. Uh, we just couldn't get through the interview. So uh, we had to eventually uh, shut it down and uh, schedule for another time and then we could never find a time but finally it has come finally i'm here uh, speaking to imam tawhidi uh dear imam how are you doing good thank you Ridwan, for having me again always a pleasure speaking to you wonderful i want to get uh, straight into it there are so many questions that uh, that people have that uh, that i might have i don't want to take too much of your time but i guess we'll have plenty all of yours you've waited for uh, you know, I think it's over a year for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's true. You have all the time you need. I'll, I'm making time for you today. It's all good. I think Fantastic. that's the only fair way to put it. I feel very privileged. Thank you. Thank you, Imam. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I want to start with, uh, you call yourself uh, the Imam of Peace. You're also known as the Imam of Peace. But isn't, isn't every Imam of the religion of peace, by definition, an Imam of Peace? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. Sorry, I couldn't resist. What What is your difference? What makes you different from the from the other imams? No, no, no. That's not. Look, you don't set the setting and then ask me the question <laughs> okay. based on the setting which the the questioner set. I don't know who asked that question. Firstly, Imam of Peace is a title I made for myself. Okay, mm -hmm. so I called myself the Imam of Peace, and that's my handle. And it's my username on social media. And uh, the reason for that is because we live in a world of identity politics, right? Where uh, people put you in a box immediately. The moment you say something, they like to put you in a box. Are you radical? Are you fundamentalist? I, so I put myself in a box. So number one, save everybody the hassle of trying to figure out what I stand for. And two, to stand out from the fundamentalist imams who call for jihad, who are Islamists, who are fanatics, you know, who support child bride and FGM and all of that nonsense, which I don't stand for. So no, we're not all the same. And we're not all imams of peace. I think you have to earn it. You earn it with being consistent. You earn it with, with uh, uh, certain contributions that you, you do, you know, put forward. Uh, in society, and you need to prove that you're a person of peace. Uh, and this whole religion of peace, Imam of Peace, uh, the, this is uh, uh, it has no value. You know, I, I like to be realistic. I put myself in this position to help people understand, because uh, there's not many of me around. How many Imams do you know that are uh, spoken that speak like me? Uh, and uh, have the positions I do and have the non-Muslim audience. So it's, it's their right, it's the audience's right to know what I stand for uh, by just looking at me. They shouldn't have to go through a week of research to understand who I am, what I stand for. They should be able to just look at my profile and say, fine, we get what this guy wants to say, we get where he, he's going and what he stands for, we have an idea. The point is, I'm the peaceful one, and no, not every imam is an imam. It's not. I, I I definitely agree with that. I mean, that was the entire. Um, I think that's the entire point of the of the of the question. I definitely agree that uh, that most imams uh, don't represent something that is uh, peaceful in our world. I think. Uh, most of uh, our listeners, our viewers, could agree that uh, that Islam today in the world definitely doesn't represent much peace. When people in the world today think about Islam, they don't think about peace. Uh, many voices or many organizations, many people try to kind of... Um, you know, introduce it or sell it as uh, something peaceful. There has been this narrative going on that Islam is a religion of peace altogether, and that the reactions from uh, from the world and from non-Muslims and uh, so-called Islamophobes are uh, vastly exaggerated. But I guess we can agree that uh, that mostly we don't see peace when Islam is represented in the world. So 
it is it is indeed probably a good idea for you to to claim your own your own identity to to put your label there and to start out first off saying that you are the imam of peace and as far as i can see those people who don't see peace in the uh in, in today's manifestation of islam find that you are the one who is uh here for peace i would say that i would definitely admit that well, Radwan, uh, let me be very frank with you. Sure. Firstly, there's no such thing as peace in religion. And the reason why I say this is because the definition of peace in religious context is different from the definition of peace that we have in, a, in, in social contexts. Definitely. So uh, in all religions, Peace is uh, achieved when God is happy. Uh, you know, God is happy and uh, you are saved because God is pleased. And that, that's the, the, the peace that theology uh, understands. But in society, peace comes with equality. It comes with dialogue. It comes with respect. So I think to begin with, claiming that Islam doesn't have the uh, peace that society expects from it, and that's true. Islam is not supposed to have the peace that society expects from it. Neither does Christian religions uh, and all religions, even Judaism. The definition of peace is what makes God happy and what God wants. That's peace. What humans they think peace is, that's something else. Let's not mix society with theology. Um, and when it comes to now, Islam, whether it be a religion of peace or not, or Islam is a religion for humans. Humans can be peaceful, can be violent. There is no concept of, uh, of, of uh, a, a peaceful religion based on how society expects it to be. This doesn't exist. A religion emerges, it has its developments, it has its uh, bad times and good times, and, and that's how a religion develops, and that's how countries develop and constitutions develop and governments develop and and all belief systems in general all systems that govern whether to guide or to rule i, I would i would say that uh their history which has some violence in it there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's there's no question to that so the idea of peace absolutely no nah, mm -hmm. doesn't exist and you, it's wrong to expect it even Okay, I, I agree with that. I would say that um, I would say that Islam has a sense of. I mean, is, Islam has an end goal, uh, as some people claim, and rightly so. Islam has an end goal of of, of providing peace, of securing peace in the world, but uh, peace in its own context, in its own sense. So, um, some people, for example, argue. Uh, you know, when they say that Islam is a religion of peace, they argue that Islam uh, is submission for most or surrender for most to Allah's uh, laws, to Allah's rules, to the to the to the doctrine of the religion, and uh, only by following the religion, only by fully submitting yourself to Islam, would you then provide uh, peace in, in Islamic society. Would you agree with that? Would you think that is the the right definition of peace that we are looking at when it comes to Islam? Yes, according to the fundamentalists, yes, that, that is the, the right definition. But what makes you different? What is your, uh, what, is, what is your aim with Islam? I mean, you are not a non-Muslim, you are not an ex-Muslim, you are still, uh, you identify as, as Muslim, you are a Muslim imam, uh, you are part of this religion. What do you think is the, uh, the ideal end goal of Islam? What, what is it supposed to be? Well, with regards to peace, what, what, what is the ideal society according to the, to, to the Islam that you believe in? There is no Islamic society in Islam. Like in the sense of, of a government, there is no Islamic government. And uh, in this, because that's how societies are formed. A society is formed when there is a superior uh, system of governance, of law, that allows certain communities to function collectively uh, based on certain laws and standings, and that's how we have a fabric of society, uh, or society, you know, uh, in general. But there, there are communities in Islam. There is no Islamic government in Islam. Um, and uh, I don't expect peace from any religion. There, there, there is no such thing as... Uh, that is a wrong expectation to begin with. So a religion 
and its adherents will defend themselves, will uh, proselytize, will, uh, will do whatever necessary because that is belief. And belief is tied to emotions more than it is tied to uh, logic at times. And we see now with the coronavirus, uh, people licking shrines and uh, doctors, doctors licking shrines. And they think this is the, the solution. So you, you shouldn't mix. And I don't mix. And I don't have these uh, logical explanations from uh, faith and so on. Faith is one thing and uh, uh, even reality could be something else. Um, and then look, because faith is not just uh, what, what I believe. Sometimes faith is, is built on what I want to believe. You see what I mean? So uh, sometimes a Muslim say. will look for a scholar and say, which scholar allows me to do this? And which imam allows me to do that? I'm going to follow him. And then a faith is created based on that type of thought. Reality doesn't agree with that all the time. So faith is one thing, religion is another thing. Let, let's keep this in mind. And theology and the text and the scripture, another thing. I don't have any expectations from religion. I don't have any expectations. I read it. And if it uh, makes sense, I accept it. If it doesn't, I interpret it in a way that makes sense. Because all the interpretations we have are made by men. So I can interpret myself. I'm qualified to interpret myself. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm willing to discuss my interpretations to whoever is, is out there. But um, end goal for Islam, society, Islamic society, there is no government in Islam. Yeah. Meaning the Prophet Muhammad never had a government. But he did. I mean, no, he histori historically, we know uh, from, from, from both uh, Shia perspective and from Sunni perspective, even looking at the Quran, we see that uh, that Muhammad was, was ordered to uh, rule a specific way and to, to treat specific believers a specific way or to treat his own believers a specific way, to establish punishments, to, uh, to make financial laws, economic laws, to uh, do all these things. So when, when we look at uh, the Hadith, the, the, the traditional uh, narrations of, of Sunni Muslims, Muslims that go back to, to Muhammad, we see uh, we see that Muhammad ruled over uh, his society, that he made a constitution, that he ruled over his society in every aspect. When we look at uh, Shia hadith, when we look at the the four uh, books of the of the of, of Shia Islam, we see we see the same. So when I look at it, when we look at it, we see that uh, that Muhammad was a not only a religious leader but also a secular leader. He also had a had a government. So. I, I don't I don't fully understand what you mean when you say that he didn't uh, have a government or that he didn't rule. Okay. Everything that you mentioned, he did without having a government. So there is no uh, issue in that. I have an organization and uh, I run uh, everything that you said. I have public relations and I have a financial sector and I have a, a fundraising sector and I have... Uh, uh, orphanages I take care of and I have a school that I sponsor and I educate and I preach and on a much smaller scale you don't need the government to do any of that I can give you uh, a number of, of, of priests and imams what you do like Hezbollah Hassan Nasrallah does Hassan Nasrallah have a government no the leader of Hezbollah doesn't have a government he doesn't have a government he does everything that you just mentioned, army and rules and does what he does. He doesn't have a government. You don't need the government to do what you just said. But Muhammad had by definition a government. Isn't that a government? I mean, he had a, he ruled over Medina and Mecca, for example. He ruled over Medina and conquered Mecca. He then, uh, okay, okay. He, he, he said, he spoke name of a state and of a ruler. N name me one minister in, in the government of Muhammad. <laughs> well, the, the, that depends on how you define Where government. was the parliament? As I leave the minister. Where was the parliament? Where was the, the headquarters? What was but, it called? I, I mean, he didn't have a government by today's definitions of a government. Or, or by, no, by, no, no, by no, no, no. There's definition. no such thing as definition when it comes to government. A government is a government. It has two wings. The economic wing and the military. That's how you form a government. You can't have a government without these two wings. Everything else is extra. Education, intelligence, ministry, foreign policy, this is all extra in a government. To form a government, you need an economy and you need the military and the ruler. This, by definition, is a government. This has been the way throughout history. The least you need to run a government is a 
a stable economy and a military, right? Sure, but you also you agree that without an economy you can't run a government, and without a military you can't defend the government. I would th- I would think the, the the military part is quite vague, but the economy is definitely true. But you also just need to rule over certain people and make certain rules, and that is by definition a government. Okay, Prophet Muhammad didn't have an economy and didn't have a military. Need. I would say he didn't have an economy in the in the in the in the in the, in the best sense because he wasn't because he didn't uh, he didn't have the means he didn't have the understanding it wasn't it was not a modern what state. You mean he didn't have the means and the understanding? Because because we know the because caliphs we know, came after him. They had governments. They did, but and, but they, and they, ruled they took over, over the had. geographic region of over fifty countries. Of course, but the society that Muhammad came from was a was a very primitive society. What do you mean society he came from? It was a few years apart. He died. The caliphate started. Okay, but uh, the thing is, Muhammad came from a very primitive society. Medina was a very primitive society. It didn't it and, didn't and have. And where a... did Abu Bakr come from? From Paris or Oxford? <laughs> no. What I mean is, Muhammad expanded. No, 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 no. I'm telling you. Do you agree with me that after the Prophet Muhammad, there were establishments of government? That's true. That's caliphates true. and had parliaments and ministries and, and dignitaries around the world and laws. And they were known as the Islamic governments. Abu Bakr, then Omar, then Uthman, and then came Bani Umayyad. Abu Bakr didn't change much after Muhammad. He just took over what 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 Muhammad left and uh, no, appoint, no, no. appointed Abu people. Bakr expanded big time, and with expansion comes the necessity of establishing laws and appointing people, because the moment you expand outside of Medina or Mecca, you need to appoint people. This becomes a system of governance. You need to show me. Who did Muhammad appoint if he had a government anywhere? But that's the point. You just said it. Uh, Abu Bakr expanded uh, the Islamic empire, which necessitated him to... There was no empire. The empire began with Abu Bakr. But Muhammad said said very explicit things, like that you're supposed to to obey your ruler, that you, uh, you know... He he said that. I mean, that that, that is, I think, unambiguous in, in, in... in, in both uh, Sunni sources and Shia sources, that you should obey your ruler, right? Isn't isn't it? Show me. I'm not I'm not sure about the Shia sources. I cannot. Uh, I didn't study. No, the no, Shia no. Sources. Show me any source. Uh, it is definitely in Sahih Bukhari. I don't have the number here. I would. I would. I would yeah, I, I I know what you were talking about. <laughs> That's what I wanted you to say. Sahih Bukhari. It's said by men. Men said. This is a what you're referring to, Habibi, is a jurisprudential fiqhi ruling in Islam that you cannot rise against the ruler, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. This is is in mainstream Sunni Islam. In Shia Islam, we rise against whoever we want to rise. We are free to rise. If the ruler is corrupt, we can... But in Sunni Islam, they can't rise against the ruler, even if he's corrupt. Uh, what, What I'm saying is, this is not from the Prophet Muhammad, because why would he tell them to, to not rise against the ruler, if he's not a ruler, he's higher than a ruler. He's a prophet from God. But you, you know, know what we, I mean? we, we, we still have this problem, though. We, we refer historically to Muhammad as both a religious leader and a secular ruler. People can refer whatever they want to refer. But, but, that's because, but that's because he was a secular ruler. He wasn't just a religious leader. You can't <laughs> give someone a title if you can't back it up. If you we, say secular ruler and a government... You need to prove to me the guy had money. He didn't have money. He had Beitul Mal, which was the the house where uh, the financial uh, income from trade or from taxes or from jizya or from the uh, spoils of war. Didn't he, have military? Didn't he say that uh, from the spoils of war, uh, a, a, a big portion goes to him and the state, or to him and Allah, and then he and then he 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 used that money to to manage the affairs of of his of of his Medina state, and also firstly, uh, he also sent out military expeditions constantly throughout his life. Firstly, Beitul Mal, this place where the financial uh, power the financial uh, uh, you know the place where the money was kept Bay- Baytul Mal was emptied every single night 
there was no money left. Every day it was emptied to feed all Muslims. So every day we started with zero. So there is no economy. And as for the military, there was no military. It was the Muslims themselves who volunteered in times of war. Okay, I think I think this is why the number of, of uh, the army is always uh, 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 varying. So one time the army is a thousand, one time it's three hundred, one time it's this. That's true. It's it's based on volunteering and also allies, allied tribes. Sometimes the the army fighting alongside the Muslims were not Muslim. They were they were uh, promised payments and and incentives and so on. That that is true. That is true. I, I would I would still I I think we would still uh, we could go on with this forever. But uh, but Muhammad never had a government. You can't prove it. You didn't prove to me he had a government. Look, if it, I it, it look, is my, if it I is. say <laughs> if I say America has a government, you say how? I say here the constitution, the laws, the ministers, the the houses, the buildings. He even had a constitution. Even now, so, I, I take maybe, you back. There is evidence that there was a kingdom. There was a government. You can't show me that for Islam. There okay, was we, no government in Medina. Oh, Mecca. All what we have are the tombs and the mosques. I would there is no still argue. Any government. No, I would no name argue. of any minister. No would... name. Okay, fine, fine. Leave it, leave it. Is there a seal for the government? I mean, come on. You can't have a government without without a seal, a stamp, a sign, signature, letters between the prophet and other kings in his in the name. Region? In his name, we do. But that that is the thing, though. I mean, it 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 completely depends on how you define a government, because we define a government by what a government is supposed to be, what by what modern governments have have become, or what what civilization what civilizations have formed. When Muhammad uh, took over society, when he took over Medina and conquered okay, Mecca yeah, I'll, and I'll started building his empire. I he, want to stop you here. Let, let, let me let me finish quickly. No, because uh, you're saying things and you're building on them. No, I'm not. And they have no base. You said he took over. Okay, I understand he was in Medina. What was the uh, geographic uh, boundaries of, of the area that he ruled? Look, there was no geographic boundaries. Let but me that's... tell you what my agenda is, yeah? Okay. This is my agenda. Okay. I believe Prophet Muhammad never had a government. Okay. This allows me to say all Islamic governments are fake and phony and have no legitimacy. Okay, but didn't you say uh, a few years ago? Look, look, I, I'm, I, uh, there's something I want to say. I love studying religion. I love going into re religions and religious philosophy and why people believe in religions and all that stuff. And I could completely secularly approach the topic and explain religion just the way you just explained at the beginning of our conversation. You know that it's that it's that it's that religion is uh, is is what make that religion is like a nation. That religion uh, is what makes society. That religion is just you know wh whatever you have meant. It evolves throughout time, and people interpret it and believe it as they want but uh didn't you uh also say in the past for example that uh that islam tells us how to rule a state or that islam uh th th that, the, that the quran tells us uh what an islamic uh, state is built on that 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 islam gives us the guidance on how to rule didn't you uh, didn't you say that in the past no i have but that doesn't mean uh did, did that change government did that change? I mean, do you have a different opinion than you had? No, 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 nothing has changed. What I'm saying is, if Muslims were to establish a government, the Quran has certain guidelines for them to follow. Okay. What we are discussing now is step one. Let's prove the prophet had a government. He didn't have a government. But, but then Islam is supposed to have a government, according to, according to Islam. No, there's no such thing as supposed to have a government. The laws are there if, you see, oh, okay. the laws in the Quran are based on ifs. So if you go to Hajj, this is the law. If you go to Mecca, this is the law. If you get married, this is the law. If you do this, then this is that. Doesn't mean if there's a law in the book, then you have to go and seek a special situation so that that law can apply to you. Doesn't work like that. So you don't think that that uh, that if people don't rule by Islam, or that Muslim societies don't rule by Islam, that 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 they are, uh, you know, that, that that Allah shames them, or that they are invalidated, or in, or in, or or anything like that. You don't think that way. You just think that if we happen to establish Islamic rule, then we should uh, follow Islamic rule as it is presented in in, in Islamic scripture. So now you're you're asking me about the the purpose of religion being revealed. And that's what you're saying, because if 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 I say to rule, then yes, 
Allah would be upset. God would be upset if Muslims don't establish a government. But I say Islam came to guide, like Christianity, like Judaism. A religion's core purpose is to guide. So okay. if it's there to guide and it has some political aspect to it and it doesn't establish a government, no big deal. No big deal. If it came to rule and it failed to establish a government, yes, God would be upset. But it didn't come to rule. And how, how do you think is, um, if, if it did happen and Islam ruled, what, 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 what is the Islam? What is the Islamic system that such a, such a, such a rule, such a government should be following? It, it depends which Islamic denomination is ruling. Well, let's talk about let's talk about Shia, for example. Let's talk about a, a, a twelve for Shia, for example. Or let's talk about. The, it would look like Iran. So, um, is is but is, is that is that okay? Is that acceptable according to uh, your Islamic belief? Is it acceptable that that Iran? Uh, according to my Islamic belief. Society, yeah. My Islamic belief. There's no Islamic government to begin with. Okay, but but didn't you just but didn't you say that <laughs> that. Uh, that if we followed uh, the Quran and did establish a government, an Islamic government, then we should uh, execute the Islamic government as it is given in the Islamic scripture. Or, right. or, or, are, you, or are you saying there should be no government at all, uh, no Islamic no, government? No, I say there is no concept of establishing Islamic government in Islam, meaning Islam did not arrive to rule, to the Prophet did not establish a government. If Muslims want to establish a government, then there are laws in the Quran for how they should treat each other and treat different classes in society and how to handle certain people. And in the Quran, I can't deny it, but there is no obligation to establish a government. You just asked me, what would a Shia government look like? A Shia government so far hasn't existed. The Fatimid dynasty was partially Shia, the one that ruled Northern Africa and Egypt. They were Ismaili Shia, as far as I remember. Yeah, they were Ismaili, they were an offshoot from Shia Islam, uh, a different sect within Shia Islam. It would look like that, or it would look like the regime in Iran. So, because again, we're not talking Imam Ali Shia, we're not talking the infallible Imams Shia or the Mahdi. We're talking these Shia Muslims, adherents. This is what it would look like, Khomeini. According to you, is uh, are, are, are Muslim governments that uh, rule in our time, such as uh, such as Iran or such as um, there are not many examples that we can give because many governments today are, are not are not purely uh, Islamic governments. Many of them are have 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 shifted, have switched, but. Uh, such as such as uh, some laws that have been established in Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates or or or, 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 or similar countries. Do you think they are wrong? Give me an example. <laughs> I mean, uh, you say some laws. Which ones? No, no. I, I mean, uh, those states, those governments as a whole, uh, are they wrong? Is 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 Iran, for example, uh, does Iran have a wrong government, have a have a wrong regime, have uh, a wrong yes, esta the establishment for there? There is no legitimacy. Yes, Iran's Islamic government has no legitimacy. Why? Because Islam does not rule. It's there to guide. It's a religion. That's contradictory, though, you, because because you said that if people wanted to establish uh, a government in the name but of Islam, then they should. But but then you said, there's but then you said it is invalid. Difference. Look, there's a massive difference between being ordered to establish a government and dealing with the nation when you have a government, because when you establish a government, that's one thing, you become the ruler. But when the government is already established, it becomes an issue of ethics and how you deal with other people. Let me clarify for you and your viewers. We'll be okay. going in circles. Okay. I'll try and put this in a different way. Okay. I don't know your background by any chance. So, sorry, I, I couldn't hear it. it was. Sorry. I said, I don't know what your background is. Like, what, what are you educated in? Could it be law? Like, have, have you, do you have an idea of how law works? Uh, in a way, I don't have a professional education right now. Okay. 
No problem. I, I, because I thought we could take this in a different uh, direction. We have in law, for example, there are countries that follow civil law, common law, mm -hmm. religious law, mm -hmm. customary law, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And then you have uh, natural law. And what I am saying is establishing a government is not an obligation, nor a necessity in Islam. But it is not prohibited. This is the point I want you to focus on. It's not prohibited to establish. Legitimacy is another thing. It could be legitimate to a group of people. It could be non-legitimate to another group of people. Legitimacy is another thing. Being prohibited is another thing. You can establish a government and still not be legitimate. Why? What does it, what makes it? Because illegal? of denomination. We have a problem in denominations. Sunni Islam says we have Mecca, Medina. We are the ones. Okay, Shia Islam says, no, we have the savior. He's going to come pray in our mosque. Two different denominations. We are not one Muslim body. So there will always be an issue of legitimacy and credibility. What would be the right uh, condition for it to be legitimate? What uh, branch would it, would it would it? That would be the prophet himself establishing a government. That would mean that it's not possible because the prophet himself, according to you, didn't establish a government. But you also say that uh, no, that it's it is possible because it's it's possible because all Muslims agree on a savior in the end of time. So you think that when the savior comes, uh, yes, 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 the government will be established. When the Mahdi comes, will it will be established? Yes, yes. See, so Islam does not say it's an obligation to establish a government. Mm -hmm. But if a government is established, there are certain guidelines as to what makes God happy. No, no uh, adultery, no drinking, no pork, no this, no that. Just the regular laws that we have, but formed on the general population. That would have to be Muslim. You can't force a, a Christian or a Jew to, to abide by Sharia law. Do you recognize the legitimacy of the of the of the of the Shia uh, hadith of the four books? Yes. Do you know why? Why? Because we don't have Sahih, we don't have authentic. In Sunni Islam, it's what it's Sahih Bukhari, the authentic Bukhari, the authentic Muslim, the authentic this. The other. We don't have the authentic. Everything can be discussed and questioned and doubted in and filtered and rejected and examined and analyzed. There's no such thing as take it and go. So I accept many uh, Shia hadiths because of the amount of examination they've undergone. Whereas Sahih Bukhari, it's a joke book. There's no way a guy with the right brain can accept Sahih Bukhari. <laughs> It hasn't even gone through the first stage of being filtered, let alone being examined. I think Sunnis would argue that it is the most solid uh, source. I mean, I, I, to be to be very honest, to be very honest, when I look at it, I, I would I would think it is it is more legitimate than the Quran. It is in its authenticity. It is uh, it seems more authentic than the Quran because we only good for them. That's their opinion. <laughs> this is my opinion. And by the way, I said I was going to explain my mug. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I have a, a rather large uh, mug that I drink in. Uh, this has been with me since 2012. This very mug has been with me since 2012. And in 2012, I was homeless for a while. I was homeless in Iran. And uh, I couldn't afford any food. So I uh, bought this cup, mug, so that I would uh, drink in it. And also, when I visit the mosque where they would give uh, free food, I would fill it up with food. And it would be my uh, my lunch the next day. Many people, they see me, they think I'm a billionaire. They don't know what I've been through in life. Mm -hmm. When I clashed with the Iranian regime, I lost everything. 
and I found myself sleeping on the streets. This mug saved my life because I had something to store food in it. So I would store food and wrap it up. And the next day I would continue eating my food. And this was my cycle. So I have this mug with me every day to remind me where I came from, what I've been through in life. That, that is the story of this mug. So if people think, why the huge mug? I'm not Arabian. This has me. And it also saves me from going back and forth having second cups of coffee or tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That is, That's the story. In any case, that is, I told that you is, I was going to explain it to you boys. That is meaningful. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, 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 for explaining that. It's meaningful, touching. Uh, okay, you, you would say we would, uh, we would talk about this, this whole government issue back and forth uh, forever, but um, uh, I want to get back to something because uh, you often say that, that, that uh, today's uh, Muslim authorities, since Muslim scholars, imams, are vastly, uh, or, or most or many of them, if not most of them, I don't know with, with, with what wording you would agree, are uh, um, wrong and push a very uh, false and a very um, intolerant and, and, and bad version of Islam. Where has it gone wrong, according to you? I mean, where did it start that, uh, that Islam turned into something that it was not supposed to be? We don't have a hierarchy. What do you mean? That's the problem. We don't have a hierarchy. We don't have someone responsible. Uh, in the Catholic Church, if there's a priest that, uh, you know, does something wrong with boys, you know who's responsible. At the end of the day, it's the Pope. He needs to take action. He's the person you can complain to, right? At least how it's supposed to be. Uh, in Islam, who do you complain to? No one. Where there the is no governing body for the religion or, or any denomination. Like Sunni Islam doesn't have anyone that governs it. Weren't, weren't the caliphates and the imamates the, the legitimate, uh, the, the equivalent of that? Though? Weren't they in, in power to, to lead Islam and to, to, to be there for the Muslim community, to be the commander of the faithful? Did they uh, do Ooh, that? Which caliph? Which caliph? Oh, the caliphs from the, from the very beginning, the, 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 the Rashidun uh, caliphs, uh, the ones after them. You know the... my opinion on them. Okay, I <laughs> okay, yeah, but... Uh, These are not examples you can use with me. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're not people I look up to, let's put it that way, to be very nice. Okay, but uh, back to the question, where did it go, go wrong? So where was it? It went wrong because there's no governing body. The caliphs themselves, they need someone to direct them. They're finished. Okay, we, we, we could argue though when, uh, when, when the caliph sent the imams ruled by Islam, they, uh, they exercised uh, the laws and the rules that, that they found in Islamic scripture that scholars mostly, mostly unanimously agreed on. Uh, and as, as such, they took their sources from, um, from the hadith. The Sunni uh, scholars took, took, it, took them from, from, from the Sahih books, from, from the Sunni uh, hadith books, while the Shia took them from the Shia hadith books. Uh, there, there are other things in the Quran. If we want to depart from the whole hadith issue for a second, there are other things in the Quran, such as uh, chapter 9, verse 29 and 30, for example, where the Quran uh, explicitly orders to, to fight those who reject uh, Allah and his messenger and to subjugate them and to take uh, the, the, the jizya text from them. And in the following verse, it says that, uh, that, that Allah curses the Jews and the Christians because of, uh, of their beliefs in Jesus as the son of God, or, or falsely, it also says that, uh, that Jews believed Ezra was the son of God. Um, then, for example, 98... Uh, Hang, on. Hang on. Um, uh, now we, we're going to have to stop here for a second. Sure. <laughs> uh, Jews don't say Ezra is the son of God in general. And uh, this verse speaks to a very small minority of Jews uh, that were fringe and it was a tribal issue. So the issue of Khaybar, Thamud, and Ad, these are names of tribes that Islam was at war with, mm -hmm. not religions. Um, so th that's just the point we need to stop at. Because if the Quran is saying that uh, Jews say Ezra is the son of God, Jews don't say that. 
Well, the thing in is, general, I think Judaism doesn't say that, doesn't teach that, doesn't preach it. So the Jew is being referred to here is a, is a, is a very small tribe that existed, and uh, same with Khaybar. And well, that, 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 that's the response that I get from that I, that I get from a Muslim apologists when I bring that up when I say this is a mistake in the Quran because Jews don't say that because when you read the Quran verse it clearly says. Uh, the Jews say Ezra is the son of Allah, and the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. So it, it no, really I just stopped you. I just, I just said that. No, I, know, I know, I know, I know. What I'm saying Judaism is doesn't think, look. Jews saying one thing is is different from Judaism saying uh, Judaism teaching. Judaism preaching something is different from a Jew saying something, because that's how uh, you can always define uh, what is Judaism and what is not. For example, today we have the, uh, what, what are they called? The uh, Nutra Karta, some uh, Jewish group that mm -hmm. for Palestine. Yeah. Have you seen those Jews? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, the Jews who, who wear the Hamas flag and they say, rabbis, and they say uh, Israel has no legitimacy and so on. They have no legitimacy. They are the ones who have no legitimacy. Are you with me? So that's not Judaism. That's them. So their claims, the Quran is a book of history as well as a book of laws and a book of stories and whatever. It says a group of people believe that Ezra was the son of God. I would say that, I, 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 to be very honest, I wasn't really prepared to, 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 to debate the Quran uh, ba um, you know, based on its facts with you. I was more going into a, into a different direction with this, but I, I received the same objection from, from, from other Muslim apologists. Uh, of, I would say from Muslim apologists, I wouldn't call you a Muslim apologist now. But, uh, and, and, and I would say, I would say that I, I simply cannot accept that because it says Jews, uh, Jews say Ezra is the son of God. If you look, at, if you look at it on a plain reading, it clearly sounds like it is referring to Jews as a whole, and that might be because there was a misunderstanding for, by Muhammad, or people in the region said that, and Islam generalized that as as something that Jews do. We don't have any historical evidence that there have ever been Jews who who deified or or, or saw uh, Ezra as the son of God. But I don't know if you if you want to. The answer you are looking for is deeply rooted in the Arabic language. I don't think we will get to a conclusion with that. If you want to go ahead with that, we can do that. But no, I think no, 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 just no. go for one. No, honestly. The Arabic language in its grammar, it puts laws for context. And a context cannot be changed when there is a clear grammatical structure for it. In Arabic, we have two laws. Well, many laws for a sentence, but the two I want to mention. The first is uh, al-atlaq and al-taqid. Atlaq means you, you state a statement that is completely absolute, it applies to all time, all space, every year, wherever. And then you have a statement that is limited to a certain time and certain place. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a human construct, though. That, that is, it's not that, human that, construct. The, the Quran that, came in the language of the humans. That is not something that exists in the, in the, in the, in, in the Quran, though. That is not something I ask that, you that, a question. that exists. No, 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 no. I want to ask you a question. What's older, the Quran or the Arabic language? The Arabic language, sure. Okay, so if the Quran is going to be spoken in the Arabic language, it needs to fall under the laws of the Arabs themselves. Okay, but what you're doing is you're applying uh, a, a certain interpretation of humans of the, of I'm the language. I'm not interpreting. To the, I'm to not the... interpreting. I'm but, telling you how my language works. But the Quran says the same thing about, uh, about Jews who say Ezra is the son of God and Christians who say the Messiah is the son of God. It, it, it's, it uses the same, the same thing for both of them. We know that Christians... Uh, vastly agree or that christians unanimously almost agree that that, that, no, that jesus no, no. is the son of god while no. jews don't what no jew does no it's not like that the christians and jews the muslims and by the way when we say muslims at that time when this verse came down how many muslims were there in the hundreds yes just in the hundreds just a few right in fact, when the first verse came down, there was not even 13 Muslims. Mm -hmm. Not even 13. What I'm saying is, 
the verses speak to people in their language according to their understanding. The Muslims at the time, there are the people in Australia and people around the world, they don't know. They haven't met people, they haven't interacted with people. The Christians they knew were the uh, Syriacs, were the Syriacs and were the Christians who were already in Mecca and those who came to trade, those were the, the Christians they knew. And they came in different forms. It wasn't one type of Christian that came. There was a bunch of Christians, different schools of thought. When the Quran says the Christians who say Jesus is the son of God, big difference from saying all Christians say Jesus is the son of God. You need to make that uh, distinction. Otherwise, we're just playing uh, with verses however we like. Okay, do you, do, do you believe that the Quran is, uh, do you do you share the, the regular Muslim belief that the Quran is infallible, that it is word for word, the word of Allah, that it has no mistakes? This book that we have, this Quran? Yeah. Is, is, no, it, it has, uh, it's been rearranged. How do you come to that conclusion? I come to that conclusion from many things, many things. Um, because again, you're speaking to a Shia Muslim. Uh, this it's not distortion I didn't say distortion because distortion is complete corruption of meaning that's distortion but just like how Christians believe some verses belong in some other chapters we also believe that some verses belong in some other chapters but the the, the book in its in itself is complete and it has not been distorted. Distorted basically means we didn't make uh, Muhammad a God, or we didn't doubt in his message, or we didn't uh, make adultery permissible and make pork halal. That's distortion. That, that doesn't happen in the Quran. What happened is certain verses belong in other chapters okay. to complete a meaning over there. And they're mainly to do with the virtues of the family of the Prophet. So it's not an issue that targets God him, himself, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So in that, con in, in that, in, in that uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say context, but that way the Quran has been rearranged because it was compiled by the caliphs. But you agree so with the Quran meaning. As a Shia that. Muslim, I'm not going to accept it. Mm -hmm. But because the imams... Uh, read it and accepted it the way it is, again, to uh, maintain the unity mm -hmm. of the, the Muslim Ummah. If there was a fault in it, they would have said, but some verses being rearranged, no problem. My question was especially about the meaning of the Quran. So uh, when, when we come to the meanings of verses, when we come to certain things that certain Quran verses say, uh, you, you do agree that, that the Quran is uh, infallible uh, in, in the things that it says, right? Like when it speaks of the Jews and the Christians here, for example, or when it speaks about, about how the world looks, how stars or, or, or the moon look, or certain things. All, all the books are infallible. The Torah, the Bible, the Quran, all, all of these Abrahamic books are infallible because the Quran didn't bring anything new. Most of what it has said is already in the Bible and in the Torah. It could be uh, monotheism or laws or uh, basic things, family, uh, you know, con uh, ethics of marriage, laws, contract laws, human life, issues like that. We, we have a lot in common with the Torah and with the Bible. So I believe in the infallibility of all, all these books. When the Quran says in chapter 98, verse 6, or in chapter uh, 8, verse 55, especially in 98, verse 6, it says uh, that those who have disbelieved among the people of the scripture, meaning the Jews and the Christians, and the polytheists are the worst of creatures. Or it says, uh, in, again, in 8, 8, verse 55, it says uh, that, that those, who have, uh, those who disbelieve are the worst of creation. When it says things like these, it is accurate in that, it is infallible in that, it is supposed to be Allah's infallible, unchangeable word that, uh, that, the, that the Muslim has to believe in.
Are you speaking to me from a humanitarian uh, perspective or from a religious perspective? I'm not speaking from any perspective. I'm just, I'm just. No, really no, no, no. You can't. You can't. You have to choose. You speak it to me as a human, or as as someone who is concerned, but is from a different religion. I don't think there is a. I don't. I don't think there is a difference between between those no, two. No, there's states. a big difference. Big difference. Because okay. if you speak to me as a human, as humans, yes. This verse is problematic. As humans, this verse saying you're the worst living creature, problematic. As humans, no religion. But if you come from a religion and I come from a religion and you say, this verse says I'm the worst creature, I say your verse says I'm not going to be saved, I'm going to go to hell. Every religion has these claims for itself, that it is the truth. Whoever doesn't agree is uh, like genitals, like animals, the worst creatures. They are uh, worst creature, meaning ungrateful, have no gratefulness for God. They have no morals, no this, no that. Why? Because God says so. And this is as on, on a religious level. But if you're going to talk to me as a human, yes, this is, of course, it's problematic. How can it not be problematic? Do you reject these, uh, these verses? No, as I don't reject it. Why do I reject it? Would you, as a, um, would, would These you... These verses don't call for violence. I know, I know they don't call for violence. Look, look, I, I'm not implying here, I'm not implying here that this Quran verse orders to go out there and, and to fight the, the, the Christians and the Jews. This is not what, the, what this verse says. We have other verses for that, as said. I should come back to that, actually. But uh, 98 verse uh, 6, for example, says that those Jews... Yeah, don't jump verses for me. Other verses? Don't, 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 don't jump between no, verses. You become no, no. like a Sunni Muslim. <laughs> no, we are, Sunni we, are the same verse. we are on the same verse. No, yeah. Now you're going back to your Sunni roots. No, no, don't no. jump. <laughs> Deal with this one. 855. Okay. You asked okay, me eight... a question. Do you accept it? I said yes. So ask me why. No, I, I, I actually first said uh, 98.6 and 855 because those are pretty much the same verses except that... Oh, same, uh, same, same context, same meaning. Except 98.6 says those among the, the Jews and Christians who have disbelieved are the worst of creatures. I said Jews and Christians will get to that because it's a tribal issue. Again, I explained the Muslims only saw a limited number of Jews, only saw a limited number of Christians. And but, it doesn't, Syriacs. but it doesn't speak of those, those limited number of Christians. It, this speaks in a very general sense. It doesn't yeah. speak because it's obvious. I don't think it's obvious. No one understands it. Do you that find any reference in the Quran for the Byzantines? Uh, well, we have, it, it talks of them as the Romans. No, no, no. Romans could be of any religion. It could be the government. It could be the ruling elite. Do it's you because... have in the in the Quran a verse talking about the, the priests and the religious hierarchy? No, because we're not dealing with them. This okay. is Islam came. Why did Islam not come to China? Why didn't it emerge in Japan? Okay, but isn't the general belief and the claim of, 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 the, of the Quran too that it speaks to, to humanity, that it speaks until yes, uh, the end of, end of time for, for all, until, all, until the end of time it or forever? It speaks to humanity. But what we are dealing with is not a message to humanity. This why, is a historical account of the development of a religion. That's what you could say about if it, if it talks about certain things, certain situations that happened at that time. But this is not a certain thing that happens at that time. It really, it just says that those among the, the Christians and Jews who disbelieve are the worst of creation. I don't think this has any historical, historical context. It is a very general statement that when, Again, when a Muslim today goes to the mosque and reads the Quran and opens the Quran and reads that and says, uh, I believe in everything this says, and that then the Quran in front of him says uh, those who disbelieve are the words of creation among the Christians and the Jews again now you're going back to theology I don't want to, to continue going society theology society theology pick one let's stick on it we'll talk about it these verses discuss theology do you know what I mean these verses speak about cre creatures creations and their creator being rejected so no problem this happens in all religions but this is what people have a problem with. You know, this is what... Uh... People have a problem, then uh, go deal with, the, with their own religions. <laughs> if you're an atheist, you have a problem with all religions, then I have nothing to do... I can't... I what can don't. I say to you? I don't have a problem. You know what I mean? If, if you're an atheist, then you would naturally reject all religions. I can't do anything to you. But here, it says something. Every other religion has this, something similar. But I'll uh, ask you a question. What about uh, Jewish people who... Uh, 
uh, believe that they are the chosen people and we are not the chosen people as Muslims, right? I, I think it's and, a false uh, concept. Some sure. uh, books talk about uh, others being uh, uh, like uh, genitals. What are we going to do? Are we going to blame all of Jews? No, but we are going to blame the religion. I would, I would certainly, no, we can't. I would certainly blame. I can't. I can't. I can't. You, maybe you can. I can't. Even Judaism. Fine. Okay. I and I, I say the same applies with the Bible. You can. I can't. See, Habib al we need to uh, maintain uh, the, the 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 topic. What's the subject? If it's theology, then the God of Moses is my God, and the God of Jesus is my God. How about that then? You, you say that the Bible is, for example, uh, infallible. You say that the, that, the, that, the, that the beliefs of the Christians, that they're, uh, that they're a Bible, which means, which includes the New Testament, by which uh, Christians testify that, that Jesus was uh, the Son of God and he was uh, divine himself and that he was also crucified and that he uh, was also resurrected on the third day and he rose to, to, to the heaven. The Quran, Old Testament. The Quran is says... The Old Testament? No, it's in the New Testament. It's in the... No, Christian we Bible. only accept the Old Testament. So you don't, you don't, you, re, you reject the, the the Christian New Testament. I don't reject it. I don't know it. I only know the Old Testament. Then, according to you, uh, according to you, because since the Quran, the Quran clearly says that that Jesus was not crucified, uh, that Jesus was not the Son of God, and that that those who say that Jesus was the Son of God will, or God Himself, will uh, go to hell and burn there in eternal. That's what the Quran says. That's what. Uh, as far as I remember, in chapter, in chapter 5, verse uh, 70 to 75, it says... Habib al what the Quran says, it says because it believes in the concept of monotheism. Okay. Christianity isn't founded upon monotheism. There is the concept of Trinity, which is recognized in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... These are two different religions. These guys say we're the good guys, you're the bad guys. These okay. guys say we're the good guys, you're the bad guys. So I don't see where the, what they want. Okay, okay. No, no, that, that's fine. I just wanted to I just wanted to know if you believe in that or not. Like, I, I don't wait, get it. Like, wait, like, if, look, <laughs> verses that say you're horrible, you're not going to go to heaven, you're this, you're that. So what? So what? I don't have a problem with it. I'm just, I'm just asking because I'm trying to understand. Someone your, else's uh, religion says about me the worst things ever. Sure. I mean, according to the, according deal. to the Christian belief. These are scriptures. Sure. Yes. Do they influence people to become violent? They do. They do. It comes down to interpretation that this is a book of history. This is a book of a development of a religion. This is not a direct order to go and kill and butcher and, and, and slaughter people. Okay. If I say you're not going to be saved, does that is that an order that you need to be killed? No. 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 So what if Judaism rejects me and they claim they are the chosen ones, which I do believe, and the Christians say I'm not going to be saved, and I say you're not going to have 72 virgins, who cares? This is just talk between religions. Who okay. cares? Okay. It's not, no big deal. It's not a big deal. I'm just trying to clarify. Religions clear. have claims for themselves, and they have claims about other people. And to each their own, no problem. We would argue, though, that in a, in a societal sense, in a, in a, in a, in a, when it comes to governing people, the Quran has 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 plenty of rules as well. Just as, uh, for example, in uh, nine nine twenty nine, when it orders to to fight those who who reject Allah and Muhammad and uh, Islamic in Islamic history, the Islamic empires, the Islamic rulers have uh, referenced Don't tell me that rulers and empires. Okay, I, they're all in the garbage. I know, bin I, know the, I know they are illegitimate according to you, but they have referenced this Quran verse when they went out throughout throughout history, throughout Islamic history, to uh, to, to go out and, and offer to non-Muslim nations that they either convert to Islam, uh, become subjugated by the Muslims and pay taxes, or die. And, and, and it, it's kind of obvious when you look at the Quran verse that this is what the Quran verse uh, implies. Or this is what the Quran verse uh, says or orders. Uh, in other examples, we see that the Quran orders to 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 to, to punish uh, adulterers with uh, you know with with lashes, for example. Or uh, similarly, it, it has it has other rules. So I I certainly see uh, an order towards governing society and establishing rules, and also establishing a military and conquering the world in that. What you, verse is the uh, the lashing verse? I don't remember the 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 verse. I don't remember. Try to find it. Do you want to give me the time to do that? Yeah, try to find it.
I don't memorize Quran chapters and verses exactly, but uh, 24.2. The unmarried woman or men, no, the, the woman or men found guilty of sexual intercourse, lash each one of them with a hundred lashes and do not be taken by pity for them in the religion of Allah. If you should believe in Allah in the last day and let a group of, well, let a group of believers witness their punishment. That is chapter 24, okay. verse 2. This is what a fundamentalist Muslim will tell you, that this will only apply if four people saw them having intercourse, mm -hmm. which generally never really happens, like unless they're having sex in public and yelling that we're not related to each other. That's a different story. This doesn't generally happen. Or, they, or if they admit it themselves. Yeah, or they admit themselves. Usually when they do, they seek repentance. But anyway, I reject this, uh, these teachings. I believe they uh, uh, existed at a time that uh, this was suitable uh, practice according to the people of that time. The same with the, the killing of apostates. Uh, the same with many other uh, teachings such as society uh, evolved islam in itself presented itself as a reformation it came to reform ideology theology teachings and so on so there is no issue in it continuing to be a reformed message at least on a social level on a social level there's no problem in that I would say there is a, there is a, there is a huge problem with it altogether. But uh, chapter no, no, as in on a social level, having reform, there is no problem in that. I, okay, okay. The thing is, uh, uh, brother of one. I, I, I don't wait, 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 wait. I want to I want to speak about how we are moving on from these verses. I would love to. I would love to. I that's actually where I was going toward. You know, but okay. uh, then we got so stuck on moving these. on from these verses. I want to ask you a question. Do you agree that when Islam emerged in Mecca, it told people that the Islam way was the better way? Sure, it did, yes. Okay, it told people that. Follow Islam, it's the best way. Okay, mm -hmm. it said, we will do this for family. We will do this for society. We will fix your theology. We'll give you freedom. We'll free your slaves. We'll do this, we'll do that. So it came not only tell people to believe in God, but also with a set of social reforms. One of them being, and listen, this might sound crazy. One of them being the burying of uh, uh, newborn baby girls. Islam, when it first came, what was uh, going on in Arabia? They were burying their newborn female girls, burying them alive. Not all of them, because we had so many women that were there at the time so it was a practice that was mainly amongst the elite that should they go to war or if they were invaded then the female wouldn't be taken hostage because that would bring shame to the family and so on I, I would agree with that to a certain extent. I think as far as we can historically uh, trace it back, we see that uh, that Islam's account of the whole issue is vastly exaggerated, that there was no huge uh, practice of, of, of female and Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't. But there, there but was just... Islam wanted to save the lives of those baby girls, so it had to satisfy these men. It had to give them a substitute. So it said... And again, I don't endorse beatings, but to keep the woman alive, Islam said, keep them alive. If they harm you, beat them. The main focus was to what? To keep them alive at first, so they don't get buried alive. In this society today, 2020, we don't have that nonsense, where it's either you get beaten or you, uh, you are buried. Let me give you an example, not one. You, you might laugh at this. I don't know if this is real or if this is, I don't know. But they say once upon a time, a man converted to Islam. They said, yalla, come. We're going to have to have you circumcised. He said, no, 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 I changed my mind. They said, no, we're going to chop your head off. 
So either way, you're going to have to get chopped. <laughs> in this society, we don't have that nonsense anymore. There's no such thing as it's either we beat you as a lady or you get buried as a, as a baby. This is nonsense. It doesn't exist. But Islam this didn't evolve out of it by itself. A social reform. And listen, by the way, sometimes the, problem, the solution to a problem is in itself a problem. But it's a smaller problem. Beating a lady, if you look at it, is much smaller than murder. But it's still a huge problem. It's a disaster. But what can you do? That this would is mean the that's... mentality of, of the Arab society. And he, the, one, the people Muhammad was talking to, did they graduate from Oxford or did they come from Paris? The people who slept in the deserts and their complete uh, tribal mentality. So what do you expect from them? You don't expect from them to be all nice and cuddly with you. These but are barbarians. That would mean that that, that that would mean that Allah is not a good planner because I mean you, we are we're talking about we're talking now, about, no 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 now, give, now give me a second on, you put on your atheist hat <laughs> and you no. went after Allah okay I'm talking okay. to you about humans okay give me a Some second humans need more time to develop don't okay. tell me Allah Allah I know Allah, Allah. I know I know give me a second give Some me. humans need more time to develop do you agree okay. Sure, but we're talking about it okay, from a completely hello. human perspective and human concept. We're talking, we're talking about it as if Islam was supposed to be that way because it didn't have any other way. Because Islam had to somehow conform to society in order to change society. But then you would say that is that Allah, who no, revealed, who revealed the Quran. Let me finish. Let me finish. That would mean that that if that Allah revealed his uh, his perfect, his final message, his message to entire humankind, which is what what Islam claims over and over again, under such terrible conditions that it had to conform to those and then establish very terrible rules. So Allah could have, you know, in an alternate. Uh, timeline Allah could have completely established a, a perfect environment a perfect time in which such conditions don't exist or could have oh, immediately you enforced now, now you're talking to me about uh, atheist beliefs no no he could have completely why enforced this have to exist in the first place and if God didn't create the society you're judging this Islam. Way, <laughs> it wouldn't have been there. what about natural disasters you you're judging... go there too Sure, no, no, no. I would be realistic would. with me. I'm a religious person. I'm a religious person. Okay. We have a society of religious people, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different experiences in life, different things, different expectations from life. How do you have one message, unite them all, and try to be productive, and try to present something good in life? There's going to be challenges. And amongst these challenges are these verses which don't sound good or are interpreted in a million ways and for and humans the there day, are challenges if, for humans if they want to better society there are challenges a human which would, would come up with such a solution like islam to those challenges allah would not it doesn't make sense that that islam would be completely shaped by by the requirements by the conditions of the time it was revealed it simply looks like it was then revealed by a human you know it created by a human because that's not how allah would would do it if allah is the almighty if the quran was revealed for all humankind for all times especially Especially if you are saying that we definitely don't live in the same conditions today as back then and these conditions by the way were forced by non-muslims into the onto the islamic society islamic society was still going on the way it was uh in the, in the seventh century until very recently until until the islamic uh world was overcome by western powers by powers that became bigger because they didn't hold on to those to, to the seventh century mindset but what you are saying is that islam was established and shaped uh under the conditions of the the society back then because it had to conform to the standards of that society but that means it's it wasn't a good plan okay i think that we should have agreed on a definition of islam to begin with so when you say islam and i say islam we don't speak about different things you just went on a uh, uh, and, and you explained how uh, islam could have been revealed in a perfect way so that humans don't need to muslims don't need to change it in order that it would conform to society and so on mm -hmm. what is your definition of islam my definition of islam is uh, is most foremost the fundamental scripture of islam the quran and uh 
if you want to go there, the, had the hadith based on the Sunni or Shia Islam, based on how, uh, how Islamic society has practiced and believed in Islam. Okay. Islam is belief in God, belief in one God, mm -hmm. belief in all of God's messengers and prophets, and belief in all of God's books. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, it, according to Islam, yes. Okay, that is Islam according to Islam. Yeah. Who has a better definition than Islam itself? Belief in God, belief in the prophet, all prophets and messengers, and all books revealed by God. Do we agree on this? Sure, yeah. Okay. Do you agree that the books revealed by God according to Islam vary from one book to another and they have some serious differences in every book the is the quran itself doesn't actually uh really say that it no, says no. that that message is the same when when you use your brain and you read the, the torah the bible and the quran are they identical no they're different you say you just said according to islam that's what i'm saying but, but yeah according okay. to me definitely they're different according to islam and according to logic as well there are serious differences in these books as a muslim if i agree that the origin is god then i understand that god can evolve with time and that his message can evolve with time and based on society and the needs of society it's not a contradiction a contradiction is when i say something now and i say something different a minute later not when i say something five thousand years ago and then 3,000 years later, I say something different. That's not a contradiction. That just means society has changed and there are different conditions for that. You see where I'm coming from? But, but doesn't the Quran itself say that, doesn't the Quran itself claim that, uh, that those books are only different because humans have made them different, because humans changed them? That actually, uh, that actually, if you look at the books revealed to the Christians and the Jews, you will find the same, same thing, you will find the same message. Uh, it, it's, it only says that it gave Jews uh, more restrictions because Jews were disobedient to Allah, for example. But it says that... Uh, now that, that, we are that the message of these religions uh, completely agree with each other. Now we're talking about a group of people in every religion that take their book, their holy book, and use it for their own benefit. This happens in all religions, and the Quran acknowledges that. That's not the issue. The issue is, is the Torah, the way it is revealed from God, identical to the Bible revealed from God, the other chapters, and are, is the Torah and the Bible, are they identical to the Quran? No. They're not supposed to be. A, according to Islam, they are supposed exactly, to be identical. Exactly, we they, agree. No, no, I, we don't. According to Islam. We reached, we reached an agreement. <laughs> according they're to not Islam, supposed to be the same. According to Society Islam, they were corrupted. Changes, and they're not supposed to be the same. Don't, so don't. I am not supposed to be like the Caliph. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be like them. Sure. I, I'm not I'm not the fringe. I am the mainstream because society changes. And all of these verses, society changes. This is again from a perspective, from an from an atheist perspective, I'm a, I'm 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 out of my mind. What am I talking? <laughs> what bubble am I living in? I know, I know. But no. in uh, from a theological perspective, because I want to answer you in a way, I don't want to lie to you. I don't lie. I'm telling you, this is what I believe. Society changes, religions emerge. That's and what this I is why I believe uh, there needs to be a social reform. The, th the funny thing is that's what I believe. And it's, it, it doesn't make sense to me that that's what you, you would believe too, because you're not supposed to believe that. That's, that's something that I'm supposed to believe. What do you mean you're <laughs> supposed to believe? I, I am supposed to believe that religions are formed and that religions change and evolve over time. And that, the, that Islam evolves over time, that Islam becomes different over time. You're not supposed to believe that. According to- Hang on. <laughs> How many prophets, again, when I answer you, I answer you from an Islamic perspective. Okay. So uh, that's my profession. That's who I am. How many prophets in Islam? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. It started again. How many? How many prophets in Islam? How many prophets are there in Islam? Yeah. Isn't the number the numbers known in the Quran are just like around twenty, thirty or so? But the official number are supposed to be two hundred fifty-six thousand or so, right? If I don't yep. if I remember, yeah. So if we have these many prophets. 
coming down different areas, different locations, different times, different languages, different books. Don't you think each one has to be suitable for the society they emerge in? Sure, yes, I would. There you go. That's not the Islamic belief, though. And that's, what do you uh, mean not the Islamic belief? According to the Islamic belief, there was only one message. That, that's, what, that's, that's also what most Muslims yes, believe. Yes, because it's coming from one source. No, the, the, the vast Muslim belief is that there is only uh, one Don't tell me law. vast Muslim belief. Fine. I don't care about the vast Muslim belief. Fine. I only really care about what the belief is. Fine. but, it, but Is I don't... the Quran from God? Yes. Is the Bible from God? Yes. Is the Torah from God? Yes. Fine, but I cannot and spend it in the Quran either. Yes. Why? Came in different time, in different places, in order to be compatible with different societies. Okay. What do you think about... Uh, let's, let's move on from here. I think we will be here forever. I would lovingly, by the way, sit down with you one day and have a, have a debate about, about religion and the belief in God. I would do that with you forever if you, if you want me to do that. <laughs> it, would be, it would be a pleasure to me. Uh, but uh, moving on, you, you said that you believe that, uh, that Islamic rule would be... That legitimate Islamic rule or the only legitimate Islamic rule would be in the future established when, when, the, when, the, when the Islamic savior, redeemer, the Mahdi comes. Uh, you, be you believe that, right? If I'm correct. All Abrahamic religions believe in a savior. Okay, so you believe that the Mahdi will come in the future. But according to, to Islamic belief... The Mahdi, the word Mahdi, means the guided one. Okay. So... I know. I know. He, all of us adherents of Abrahamic religions believe that there will be a savior. His name is Mahdi. And Mahdi means the guided one. And the Mahdi will establish a kingdom or a government. The Jews, the Christians, the Muslims will all unite under his banner. He is the savior that all of humanity is waiting for, regardless. I mean, unless uh, they, they have no faith. But those who believe in Abrahamic teachings, we believe in a savior who will establish a government. The Muslims will be satisfied Therefore, in a way, it is Islamic. It is a, uh, a kingdom that God would accept. And the Christians will accept it because it will fall in line with their teachings. And so will uh, the Jewish people. That is what we are taught. But uh, don't, don't both denominations, when we talk about Shia Islam and Sunni Islam, I'm, I grew up in Sunni Islam and I learned these things from very early childhood. And when I look at Shia Islam, I see the same expectations of the, the Mahdi in the future. The, 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 the qualities um, and the actions of the Mahdi are kind of uh, defined. They're pretty specified in the, in, in the narrations, in the Hadith and the beliefs of the scholars, for example, of history. And uh, we see that, that the expectation of the Islamic Mahdi, the guided one, the redeemer, the savior, is that, that he will come and he will uh, unite the people and go to war and he will fight. And afterward, uh, Jesus will come. Jesus will come to aid him. And Jesus will, uh, I quote, break the cross and kill the swine. And he will uh, he will fight the Christians. Uh, he will the, the Christian. He will call the Christians to the true faith, to true faith, which is Islam. And those who reject will be fought. And the Jews will also be fought. It, especially when we come to the Jews, there is a one very delicate hadith which uh, which 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 directly says that there will be a huge war against the, the Jews at the end times. Uh, at, at that time, and the Jews will hide behind rocks and. and Ridwan, who says this? hadith books but what if they were this smart in telling the future they would have told us the cure for coronavirus but what then do you base your belief of the mahdi on do you believe but you also because it is books? because it is a foundation in in all abrahamic teachings that there has to be a savior in the end of time but but islam but the quran doesn't say that it doesn't say that it, it's just the hadith teach something like that the quran is a book that even the guided one will have to uh, adhere to. Same with the Bible and same with mm -hmm. the Torah. These are books from God. The Mahdi is mentioned in the Quran, but not in the, in, by name. Because at that time, they feared whoever would be, would be killed. That is the, the reasoning behind it. So tyrants... For example, Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, 
who hunted down Moses as a baby and tried to kill him. So to save the messengers and to save their successors from this, he wasn't named. But there are references to the Mahdi. There are references, and I can send you a list. What I'm trying to say is these details of the, Jesus is going to kill the swine. Jesus, the messenger of God, is going to fight with a pig? Are these guys crazy? I'm you know, when sure I tell you the hadith is full of bullshit, you don't believe me. That's pretty much that's metaphorical. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> he's going to fight with a pig? No, Would that, you fight with a pig? That's metaphorical, though. That's that. Uh... That, I, I think that pretty much refers to <laughs> when they want to get away with it they say it's metaphor it's not a metaphor nothing is metaphor <laughs> these guys they have a stupid imagination <laughs> Jesus is going to fight with a pig why would Jesus fight with a pig he's got nothing better to do second coming we've been waiting thousands of years for Jesus to come <laughs> then he arrives and he leaves us <laughs> all and he, where's the pig <laughs> want to fight the pig are these guys crazy? It does this sound funny when you say it. <laughs> garbage. Believe me. Don't believe this hadith. Nonsense. And especially Bukhari. Anyway. <laughs> it does sound funny when you say Coming back to uh, the Mahdi. Right? What's your definition of the Mahdi? The guided one. Okay. But, but what, what, uh, do, do you have a specific uh, expectation? Or is your belief just there will be a savior and he will uh, bring justice? Is that it? No. What you said is true. He will go to war. Okay. But where will he go to war is the question. <laughs> in the Middle East, he's going to follow us. I swear to God, this is in our Shia hadith, that he's going to go there and the battle will be between Najaf and Karbala, the two holy cities. The wars will take place in Muslim land, not in America or Europe or Australia. The war is going to be in the Middle East. He's going to fight these crooks who claim to represent him. But now you're basing your, your belief on the Mahdi, on, on, the, on, the, on the Shia Hadith, which you just rejected when it came to the... To, no, I didn't to reject. The... I didn't reject Shia Hadith. I said Shia Hadith. I accept more than I accept Sunni Hadith because we don't have Sahih. But don't the Shia Hadith the also... The concept of authentic doesn't exist. We have only what is filtered and what is, what is subject to being filtered. And with regards to the Mahdi, by the way, most of our hadith are in common with the Sunnis. Mm -hmm. Like this battle in the, between Najaf and Karbala, the battles in Iraq and Iran. Who is in Iraq and Iran? The Shia. Who is would, there? The Shia. I would just comment that, it's, that, that that is just because uh, that Muhammad didn't have much knowledge of, what, of, the, of, the, of the geographical regions of the world. But that is just me. I'm an atheist. Don't listen to me. That's what just... do you mean Muhammad didn't have knowledge of the geographic <laughs> of the world? Wallah Radwan, you're making me laugh. He did uh, it. He did Naj it. Najaf, the desert of, of Najaf in Iraq is connected to Saudi Arabia. How much of a geography do you need? He didn't have he much. He heard of the Romans and he went to fight them in, in Palestine, in he Jerusalem. Also, he, he also when said, he sent to the army of, of, of Zayd. So he clearly knew of the region. How he knew of he the region know? because he was a traitor. As far as we know, he was a traitor who would uh, go, go back and forth between, between Syria. And not between necessarily. And not back. necessarily. From the first day of the message Islam, he sent his people to go and hide in, in uh, Abyssinia, in Ethiopia. Well, they, uh, the Arab people had a huge history with, with, the, with the eastern coast of Africa. And, uh, we, we even know yeah, that they... Yeah, and, and Najaf and Karbala are on the way. It's in that region. Yeah, but Mohammed couldn't have spoken of America, of course. I mean, <laughs> he didn't. Really, America didn't even exist at that time. <laughs> it did exist as a geographical region, though. Yeah, I know. But what is there to talk about if there is no inhabitants? Like, you won't find him speaking about the Red Indians or the First Nations or uh, the aboriginals in australia this is not something we, we within his, his, his uh, field of work i know, I know. Actually, you make me laugh why I, didn't I will... jesus speak about the eskimos because he didn't know what do you mean he didn't know <laughs> he didn't know about them according no to me. he didn't know he's a messenger from god he didn't know well of course you don't believe in god but he <laughs> didn't know and it's not his job to talk about them do you ever see me speaking about paris hilton <laughs> <laughs> or Kim Kardashian, it's not my job to speak about them. So if, if Jesus or if Muhammad didn't speak about a certain area, that means they don't know. No, no. no. Uh, what, 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 we, what we could uh, conclude, though, what I always uh, say is that, is that Muhammad's 
uh, what Muhammad's knowledge of, of geographical regions is very limited to what he actually knew in that at that time. And his, his, his prophecies are also very limited to that. In fact, the Quran itself is limited to that. He, he didn't know about, about, uh, about China, about different people around the world. Yes, he did. He didn't yes, know he about. did. Learn knowledge even if it was in China. That's a, that's a fabricated that hadith. hadith. That's a fabricated hadith. No, it's not. It is a fabricated hadith. What about Ya'juj ya and Ma'juj? Uh, Ya'gog and Magog. Is that not in the hadith? He doesn't speak about China. China. No, he doesn't speak about China in that hadith. I'm going to get to the hadith where it specifies the mountains and even when it says they eat everything. I'm pretty sure it doesn't specify China, but I, 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 might, I might totally be wrong. I don't know. I'll take it back if I'm wrong. Uh, I swear to God, the hadith, the ones that I believe in, they say the Yagog and Magog will eat everything on earth mm -hmm. towards the end of time. I don't know of a I, nation I don't right now that. that fits this description. But it fits your description. The it fits your description. I would agree. I in the, in the past I followed an imam when I was a Muslim. I followed an, uh, a sheikh who also argued that this was in reference to China. That was his interpretation. And when I was a follower of him, I kind of I thought, oh, that makes sense, and I agreed with that. But when I look at it now, there is no specification of China. There is just interpretations that you can make now. Interpretations no, no, that no. people make. No, in the, the, past. the the prophet knew of China because the caliphs, uh, to be caliphs, in a uh, in a uh, in a coup in China, I'll send you. No, I won't send you. It's in my book. Do you have my book? I do. You do? Yeah. Okay. It's in uh, the chapter that's uh, called uh, a religion of war. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that chapter? I haven't. I haven't read it through. To be honest, I'm, okay. I'm very, I'm very poor. In, that, in that chapter, I speak about how the caliphs were commissioned to go and help the Chinese overthrow their ruler. But what, I wanna, what I'm trying to get at is that, no, they knew of China and they had actually trade and dealings uh, from paper that they had came from China. Okay. So no, China, China was so big at the time, it, you, can't, you can't ignore it. You can't, it was, China was always huge, it okay. had, had presence. Can't it okay. be ignored? I really, I really didn't prepare for uh, to have a debate with you about whether Islam is right or not, and whether Muhammad was, uh, you know, was a, a man of wisdom or a man of ignorance. If I had known that we would get into this, I would lengthily go into other stuff with you right now. But I actually really didn't prepare for that. I was, I was more uh, wanting to talk about uh, with with you about how uh, what makes Islamic society so uh, bad today. What uh, what makes uh, you know, Islamic authorities so uh, wrong today, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be uh, made better, uh, how you imagine Muslim society to, to, to reform and to become better, to, to go more forward into the, into the future, into a more, more modern world. Uh, I don't know if you, if you want to uh, switch to that and briefly talk about that and then we can- maybe... Yes, of course, I'm all yours. I, I enjoy speaking to you, I'm all yours. I, I do too. I would love to one day sit down and have a, a very long discussion with you about, about Islamic belief. Seriously. Anytime. Keep, keep, anytime. Keep I'll mind. message you when I'm uh, down your neck of the woods. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so we talked about, uh, you said that, that Islamic government was not, uh, was not legitimate, that there was no order to create an Islamic government, that there could be an Islamic government, but they, that you wouldn't recognize it as legitimate until the, the Redeemer comes. Uh, or the, the, the guided one, the Mahdi, comes in the, in the future. Uh, what, what is your whole, um, what, what is your vision? When you come to, to, to Muslim society and to, to human society in general, what makes uh, you and your vision different from the general Muslim belief? What do you think has to change in the, in the Muslim population in order to, for it to be better and to keep up with the rest of society? I don't know what makes me different uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I use my brain. This is who I am. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying who I am. I use my brain and I respect myself and I respect the people around me. And that's it. As simple as that. 
Okay, so you you, be, you basically believe that people that Islam is simply a belief for uh, for societies, the belief a belief to have to believe in, not to go out and fight, not to rule and uh, commit atrocities. Yeah, not not to rule. It has uh, elements and concepts of self defense. It has rules of war. Um, it has a, a very sophisticated and technical uh, terminologies that mm -hmm. can be interpreted and applied in certain areas. But in its essence, it is a religion and religions are here to guide, not to rule. So what do you think is the, how, how do you think is the future of, of Islam? Do you share those, uh, those mainstream Muslim beliefs that, uh, you know, the, that, the, that the awaited, uh, how, how do you call it? That the end of time or the the awaited events of the of the end times are in any are anywhere near in the future or anything like that or no we are living in the end of times now you do believe that so you we would... are in the end of time so we are in the end of time now yeah so you would you would believe that the, that the Mahdi would also be uh, maybe imminent or maybe not too far in the future no I believe that the end of time is uh, is not like a, a date or an era or no I believe that. It could be 100 to 200 years, mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, I do believe that uh, there is a second coming. And I believe that, you know, you know the world is uh, in need of the savior. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, we deserve to live a honorable life and uh, I'm not the only one. I think many people, even those who follow me online, believe that we're living in end times. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean the world is coming to an end. It just means these are developments, uh, natural disasters, diseases, change of governments, coups, revolutions, uh, uprisings. These are not normal uh, events, not in the speed they are happening in right now. So there is definitely something that distinguishes our time from previous times. And uh, as a Muslim, I, I do await the second coming of Jesus. So that is something I'm hopeful for. Um, that, that's about it. I would argue that we don't uh, live in very special times, that, uh, that we just li uh, live at a random time in human history where uh, things happen as they happened before, that humans usually often have an understanding um, or, or, or think from their own experience that these times are different from ever before. If we look at the world, for example, we see that there is a massive decrease in wars and, and conflicts in the world. Although currently to us, when, when looking at it with, a, with, with the blank eye, it looks like there are more wars in our time. Uh, human mortality rates have uh, decreased very much. People live much longer and much healthier. We're making a lot of progress, a lot of uh, progress even uh, going to outer space now and uh, going very, very much into uh, expanding and uh, finding out what lies beyond our planet. Uh, I would hope, I would not hope that we are at some uh, time of the end where we, where, 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 where everything kind of is destroyed or where uh, finalizing events happen. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely not share that belief. Uh, I, I sure hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> But I would definitely agree with you that uh, that we need uh, better times, that we need uh, more peace, that we need uh, more agreement, that we don't need more conflict, that we don't need more bloodshed. I think that is something that you and I could, could agree on very much. 100%. Wonderful. I would lovingly, as said, uh, have, have another talk with you to sit down and talk about uh, beliefs. We can, uh, we, we, we should, we, we will. I, we, we, we must do that, I would, I would argue. Uh, <laughs> 100%. Next time I'm uh, down in your area, I will. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Is there um, any other... Any I'll other invite thing? you to a halal uh, meal. <laughs> I will. I will do you have, by the way, do you have uh, shisha, shisha lounges in your area? Uh, not in my immediate area, but uh, a bit further toward bigger cities definitely i think so okay awesome we'll go there it's uh, it's halal I, I think all religions can unite on on shisha <laughs> i would do that i would do that i haven't had a shisha in a long time that was like i don't know five years ago or so I don't know. wow quite a while yeah i need to i need oh to do God. that again yeah maybe maybe we could do that uh, together with you and then i would finally break that and do it again that'd be nice definitely i'll make you a pro <laughs>
Wow. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, Imam, uh, w one final thing. Uh, what are your plans? Is there anything that you want to, uh, that you're going to get married? Announce? You're going to get married? What? Get remarried. Remarried. Oh. After this coronavirus is gone. Can you believe my lady is locked in one country? I'm locked in another. That is, that is messed up. Yeah. It's horrible. My whole plans of, uh, yeah. That is awesome, though. That's something good to hear, something positive. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, as soon as the, uh, uh, you know, this virus thing is over, hopefully soon. Yeah. yeah, that's the plan. I have like three books coming out because I'm stuck at home. So I thought I finished them. Um, you know, I write and then I go for a jog for a walk. And then another idea comes to my head. I come back, I open Microsoft Word, I start writing about another topic. Mm -hmm. And then throughout time, what I do is I write two or three books. To All I need to do is just sit, focus on one month, on one book, perfect it, move on to the next. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, I'm going to finish one book about the principles of Islamic jurisprudence, mm -hmm. old lessons I gave back in the day. I'm going to... Uh, issue them in a book, probably around 200 pages. And then I have another book coming out about anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And then another book, which I think you would be interested in, uh, that one's, I think, 70% complete. I need to really sit and focus on this book. It's, it's about the perception of the Prophet Muhammad according to the minority of Islamic sects and denominations why don't they blow themselves up and why is it that they call religionists blow them blow them up mm -hmm. so what exactly is uh, the difference how do they see and perceive the prophet differently that's that's intriguing i'm definitely interested in that that yeah. is is the third down the line mm -hmm. I'm also writing a book. I think you, should, you would be interested in that. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you when, when it's done. So. What is it about? Can I ask? Uh, it's, it is, I mean, I'm currently working on two things. Uh, it's just I didn't really have the time over this last uh, year to get to get through those. I've had a lot of stress. I, don't, I have no idea how you are dealing with all that. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it will be definitely about uh, Islam and the future of Islam, Islamic theology and the future of Islam. Uh, and, and Amazing. One other, okay. And one other uh, will be about about uh, belief and doubt in Islam in general. So those will those are two projects that I uh, that I'm working on. Well, good luck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, I appreciate it so much, Imam, for the, the, right. you, that you that you joined me, that you were here. Is there? Right. I'm, I'm happy. You're happy that everything went well this time. Well, I am. I am really. Is there anything else that you want to? Uh, Get no, thank you. I wish you all the best and uh, look forward to meeting you in person. I hope so too. Uh, thanks everyone for, for watching. Thanks everyone for, for joining, for listening. Uh, wish you all the best. Uh, let me get the view here together. Wish you all the best and um, hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, leave your comments below in the description. Uh, you can forward more questions if I ever, uh, if, for, for the future when I definitely come, come together with, with Imam Tawhidi again to talk with him about our, our differences and, and what we have in common. Uh, thanks so much. Have a fantastic day. And uh, as I say, Imam Tawhidi is not saying this. This is what, this is what I am saying. Not me, not me, not, not me. That's not what he's saying. Stay away from Islam. <laughs>